Yeah, the Drive for Five special is taking over OTB Sports Radio all day from 7am to midnight with build-up to the All-Ireland Football Final. It's all with thanks to Tech7. Simply tech it and leave it. You're very welcome along to the Kerry Hour here on Off the Ball. We're in truly uncharted territory for probably the first time ever. We've got to try and build up the hopes and expectations of Kerry people. The cockiness is gone. The confidence is done. We just sat back and it seems that we've accepted that the five in a row uh, is going to happen. We've got 21 All-Ireland medals, All-Ireland Senior Football medals with us on the show this afternoon. We're going to have Mikey Sheehy with us very shortly. We're going to have Dara O'Kneader. We're going to have Marco Shea. We're going to have Barry John Keane with us as well and in studio for the entire hour. We've got a man who's got four of those All-Ireland medals. Sean O'Sullivan, how are things? Good on, yeah, good, good. Um yeah, you, you kind of set the scene well there. We're uh, we're travelling in hope, I suppose, really, on, on Sunday. Well, you don't have far to travel, but I suppose <laughs> for the, the, the people coming up from Kerry, um, I know a lot of them will come up on, on Saturday to... We enjoy our weekend in the big smoke, you know, um, but they are travelling, I'd say, more in hope than, than uh, expectation. And uh, it's it's strange. It is strange. Um, it's, it's, it's weird going into an all Ireland final with maybe the neutrals, dare I say it, Shouting for Kerry, what do you think? Well, I heard that after the whole David Goff situation, all the neutrals had jumped ship and are now supporting Dublin, so that's bad news for, for anybody who was uh, <laughs> counting on the neutrals. We do want to focus uh, on the positives here, and I promise that is the last time the referee's name is going to be mentioned <laughs> uh, over the course of the next hour. We do want to focus on a couple of the positives uh, and happier times, and you brought up a, a great moment from 2007, which uh, I'd completely forgotten about. And by a great moment, I mean something that kind of sums up uh, where we're at in terms of the transformation of Dublin, especially. It's the All-Ireland semi-final, Kerry against Dublin. Do you want to describe to us what happened? Yeah, so... Um uh, fantastic game to be part of. I suppose we were in the midst of, uh, you know, that that great squad that got to six finals in a row from 04 to 09. We were going for the the, the back to back in 07, and uh, we had kind of stuttered and stammered our way through the championship, really on, and obviously faced Dublin in the semi final. And right after half time, I remember Declan O'Sullivan uh, getting a great ball from from Killian Young on the edge of the square, turning and, and sticking one in past Stephen Cluxon into the bottom corner and. We kind of took over from there, you know, we, 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 we set out at half time to kind of take control of the game. We did a great score by Declan, great goal. And uh, it looked from there on in that we were we were going to, you know, push on and, and, and you know, ease our way into a, an all Ireland final. But obviously with Dublin, you, you just you just don't do that. And they really came back at us in the, the, I would say, the middle period of the second half. And they actually brought it down to a point um, when I think we dropped one short into Cluxton's hands. And I suppose, as you said, it <coughs> shows how far that guy has come in his in his uh, development. So what does he do when he gets the ball into his hands? So he starts soloing slowly out towards the uh, yeah out towards the the, the Q's extend. And uh, I think we just let him have it. To be honest, you know, <laughs> you 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 often hear players shouting, "Let him have it! Let him have it! Let the keeper have it!" And you just didn't expect, because I mean, this is 07, so Tluxon still has a good few championship years under his belt at this stage. And, uh, He's still an all-star, like. Absolutely. And uh, what he did was, you know, just, I suppose, with the pressure, I mean, what, what's that, 65 minutes, mm. four, less four minutes to go, he just basically kicks one straight down the throat of Kieran Donaghy, um, who's standing out in the middle of the field for some reason all by himself. Um, and uh, we just slowly worked the ball, a lot of patience, uh, slowly worked the ball back up into the corner uh, and it found its way into the hands of Darrow Shea. And Darrow won't like me for saying this, but he wasn't always the most brilliant kicker, <laughs> kick passer in the world. But he plays an absolute beautiful ball across the field into the arms of the guy you want on the ball at that stage, uh, Colin Cooper. And uh, I had just came on actually about maybe five, six minutes beforehand. And I remember Pat O'Shea saying to me, because we were under a lot of pressure and he was just saying, look, get on the ball. We'll take any score at this stage. And he actually said to me, even if it's a punched point, just punch one over the bar if we have to. <laughs> and uh, Gooch played me a lovely little slip ball. Um, got absolutely nailed in the process um, by a Dublin defender. T Tommy outside is saying he, got, he dived. Yeah, Tommy, Tommy, yeah, Tommy says that I should watch that one back. I've watched <laughs> it a few times. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with he got nailed, Tommy. Um, and uh, look, luckily enough for me, um, I, I was able to punch it over the bar and it, it extended our lead to two points. Um, I met Phil Egan outside earlier on. I know you're not big fans of the punch points around here, but he's let me away with that one. because You fisted it over from like 25 yards. Well, the goal wasn't done. The goal wasn't <laughs> done. And uh, I was only doing what my manager had told me. So as far as I was concerned, we, I, I, I got the job done. And in fairness, we, we saw it out from there. And... Uh, and of course went on to win win the 07 All-Ireland and it was the back-to-back -back, which was great. Because it's an amazing moment that kind of sums up 
Dublin in microcosm, I think, in that decade. You take that situation this weekend and Dublin are a point down with 65 minutes on the clock and Stephen Cluxon has the ball soloing out from goal. There is no way in hell he is kicking that ball to Kieran Donaghy, who might be... Well, first of all, Donaghy is not playing anymore. Uh, <laughs> second of all, he's not going to kick it down the throat of any Kerry player uh, in that situation. It, was, it, is the most, it would be the most unbecoming thing if he saw that this weekend, but yet at that time it was the most typical Dublin thing to yeah, see. Yeah, and it was, look, it was, I suppose it was an All-Ireland semi-final. Dublin were, you know, they were still a, a team in development. They, they hadn't maybe got to the big day, whereas we had been around the block since 04. A lot of our team actually were there from 02. We had won in 04, lost in 05, and now we were back, uh, won again in 06, and we were all here where we were in 07. Uh, we were an experienced side on, and maybe that little bit of pressure got to Stephen that day, and he just went for a long ball, and I absolutely 110% agree with you. If that happens, if we win that situation on Sunday... He, he's cutting back inside, and he's hand-passing oh, it. There's, to, there's to, no to way he's him. trying that ball, absolutely no way. Um, uh, it, it just wouldn't happen under this current uh, Dublin regime. Jim Gavin wouldn't allow it to happen. The guys out in front of Stephen Cluxton wouldn't allow it to happen. And the guy, the guy himself wouldn't, yeah. wouldn't make that same mistake. Two years later then, Gooch gets a bit of revenge for his hit. He didn't really need revenge considering the fact that Kerry won the game on that occasion. But it's 10 years on this year. It's kind of the summer to be talking about at the start of the Earwigs game. Mm. Uh, you were obviously involved that day as well. Coming back from the brink that season. Yeah. Uh, you know, I often, when we get together the Kerry Leds, we often talk about 09 and uh, it's it's a head scratching one on to be honest because it, it was a year Jack was back, Jack O'Connor was back in charge um, after Pat O'Shea had done his two years we'd lost the All-Ireland the previous year to Tyrone and it was a year that started so well, we won the league we won Division 1 beating Derry in the final and you know, looking back maybe that was papering over some cracks, you know we thought maybe we were further down the road than we actually were mm. um, got to the Munster Championship, drew with Cork and Killarney, 13-1-10, uh, to 1, 10, I think, low-scoring Munster final, uh, sorry, Munster semi-final, and we got blitzed in Parky Cueve a week later. They, yeah. they, they beat us out the gate. It seemed like something was wrong from the outside. There was, we, we couldn't figure out what was going on in, in the Kerry camp. Yeah, do you know, I kind of, I kind of uh, compare it to what's possibly going on with the Irish rugby team at the moment and that Irish rugby team that went into the 2007 World Cup. I, from the inside looking out, we couldn't put our finger on what was wrong. Right. And I know that people outside looking in, Kerry supporters were constantly on phone and shows and so on saying, no, there's something wrong here. But we just felt that there was always one big performance in us. We just couldn't, it, I don't know, was it maybe we were on the road a long time or what it was, but we just couldn't find that little bit of um, cohesiveness within the group to, to drive on. And I mean, we, we pulled ourselves out of some real holes. I mean, we went away to Longford on a wet day, played terribly, got out of there. Very, very lucky to get over Sligo and Tralee. Yeah. We had Dermot Murphy to thank for saving a penalty. We won by a point. And I mean, it was unheard of. You know, Kerry only beating Sligo by a point in the championship with the greatest respect to Sligo. Then we had a few fellas going offside and different things like that. And there was crisis meetings about crisis meetings. <laughs> and and uh, and then we played Antrim above in Tullamore and again played poorly, but got out of there winning by about six points in the end, I think. And, you know, people often say, was it a game that changed your year or was it something that happened in training? It might have been Paddy O'Shea often talks about the Kerry 97 team. They played Cavan in a challenge match up the country a couple of months before the championship started or after the league. And he felt that day that Kerry were going to go on and do something special. For us that year, it was actually that train journey down from Tullamore. We were on the train, fellas were down. Um, you know, the management you could see were, you know, pissed off at us. And next thing, the draw came through on the radio that we had got Dublin in mm. Crow Park in the quarter-final. And the, it's amazing that the garage, uh, sorry, the carriage just turned giddy <laughs> with excitement. <laughs> Fellas started playing card games. They started talking about training next week. Everything was forgotten about. The fellas that were that went offside after the Sligo game were all of a sudden back in and driving it. And uh, I mean, that, that the start of that's that. That's Tomas and Gooch. Yeah, yeah, look, obviously, look, that's in the past. And, and, and you know, there was different things floating around at the time. but. You know, the two lads went on to have fabulous years. And I mean, you just mentioned him. Gooch started that whole 2009 quarterfinal off with a, with a brilliant goal. And um, we, we focused a lot in that game of trying to quieten the crowd. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's an easy thing to say about Dublin. You know, Dublin and Croke Park are, are a different animal with the crowd behind them. And the focus going into that game was, can we quieten them? Now, did we expect to score a goal after, what was it, 30, 40 seconds? We didn't, but... 
you know, when you have the likes of Gooch in, in the team, then anything is possible. Absolutely. It, it's one of the things, there's probably two main years that you can pick out, 2009, in terms of like ambushing the dubs, I think 2009 is one. Uh, the other one, of course, has to be 1975, and I'm delighted to say that uh, one of the protagonists of that year, Mikey Sheehy, is on the line. Good afternoon to you, Mikey. Thanks for taking the call. No problem. No bother. Uh, let's talk about that then. Uh, Sean here, Sean O'Sullivan in studio with me, mentions the giddy nature of drawing the dubs on that occasion. Was this a giddy nature of this youngest Kerry team of all time going into that 75 All-Ireland against Dublin? Yeah, it probably was because I, I think we went up with, with uh, well, we, we had great expectations, okay, but I think our fans didn't really, you know, because uh, we, Nick O'Dwyer took over the team, I think, around March 1975. We had a disastrous league campaign. I think we got hammered by Mead in the league quarter final. Um, Johnny Cullity had been kind of in charge, and Nick was his right hand man, but the, <coughs> the reverse roles and Nick the famous 28 nights in a row training <laughs> regime came in, and, you know, he got us up to a fitness level. Uh, the team was very young. I think there was, I'd say there was about five, five or six of us were playing under 21 that year because Kerry won the, the treble. We won minor, senior and under 21. But we went up and, you know, we, we expected expected to win, really. I'd be truthful with you, you know. And I don't know, Sean describes the giddiness in the in the carriage and I can understand just, just <clears throat> going off the point slightly. I can remember meeting the Gooch on the, the Tuesday morning and he was going on to work. And uh, he, he was actually hopping down the street because of the draw against Dublin. But going back to our one anyway in 75, it was, I suppose, it was our first All Ireland final, which is something similar, senior final, something similar to the lads uh, next, next, next Sunday. And uh, I think the fans kind of were, were, were just hoping that we put up a good show. But no, we went up to win, and, and thankfully things worked out well on the day. Hi, Mikey, Sean here. How's it going? Very good, Sean. I hear there's a. I, I've been away for a, a couple of weeks. There's a good demand for tickets below here. <laughs> oh, there is, Jeannie Mac. That is the big problem, Sean. Unfortunately, there's never enough. Is there? You're, you're, well, you're, you're always a like, good man for a few, though, aren't you? Kerry, Kerry Dublin. Like, I mean, it's 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 the dream final when you think of Kerry, like having top to seven All Irelands, and then you have Dublin, who are making massive strides to catch up to us, and now they're going for history. You know, and to, to, and there's no doubt, like the the two best teams in the country are playing next Sunday, like. Absolutely. Can I ask you about the forwards, Mikey, uh, especially yeah. the Kerry forwards? Um, yeah. what, what are they going to have to bring on Sunday? You know, they all talk about the, the, the prospective matchups and who's going to pick up who. Yeah. But what do the Kerry forwards have to bring? Like, you went in in 75, you had a young forward line yourself uh, included. Kerry, yeah. obviously, are looking at the young fellas like Shawnee Shea and David Clifford. It's going to be a big yeah. day for them. And, and first of all, how are they going to handle it, do you think, like you did? And, and secondly, I, how, what, are they, what can they bring to the table to, to, <clears throat> to hopefully get us over the line? Well, I think that the two guys that you mentioned in particular, like David Clifford, was, was with us last year when I was still involved with him and Fitzmaurice and uh, Shawnee Shea was there for a couple of years with us. But these guys, like, the one thing that I noticed about them outside of them being fabulous footballers, um, their temperament is excellent, you know. Nothing will say as these guys make Sunday, you know. And, like, I mean, obviously, they'll have to bring outside of, 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 of being clinical when they're in possession of the ball. And I think they will get chances. And I think these guys, and plus Stephen O'Brien and Paul Ganey and Killian Spillane or whoever else is on, will be clinical. We will, if we get chances, we'll have to take them. And I think, I'd, I'd be confident that we will take them. But uh, I think the huge thing from these guys that they'll have to walk work like dogs absolutely without the ball you know against these dogs you know and stop them because how many times do Dublin start attacks a counter attacks in the back you know and they'll kill you we saw it particularly I suppose in the All-Ireland semi-final uh, the first 10-12 minutes in the second half was frightening you know so we'll, we'll just have to stop that but I would have to say that you know from probably midfield from number 8 up to number 15 I think we're every bit as good as the dubs but tis, tis, tis at the back defen defensively that, that w w I would certainly hope that we could step up a little bit on the Tyrone game particularly in the first half that certainly wouldn't do against Dublin and you rightly said there the matchups are going to be huge on both sides you know but I, I, I mean there's, there's exciting uh, forward talent on both sides Conor Callaghan Paul Mannion Dean Rock Kieran Kilkenny my god the boys and at the other end Stephen O'Brien, Paul Ganey, uh, Shawnee Shea and David Clifford. You know, so it's, it's, it's a very exciting prospect, really, you know. Uh, Mikey, we were joined by uh, Colin Nally earlier on today, the Meath coach, and he had some very interesting things to say about the temperament of the dubs. And uh, I guess in terms of how clued in they are in terms of dealing with a referee and how they manage to speak to referees in a better manner to all the other teams around the country. Like, I've, like we, we can talk about talking to referees and it's something that you had a, a close quarter example of in 1978 when Paddy Cullen got chatting
chatting to a referee a little bit too long. It's a, it's a far cry from the way the dubs used to, to deal with things like that. Sorry, I, I missed that question, sorry. The, the dubs and the way they deal with the referees, Mikey. It's, it's oh, yeah. But, but again, look, you, you know, they're, they're on the road so long, you know. And mm. again, I think it comes down from the leadership that Jim Gavin shows, you know, the management, the, the, um, Declan Darcy, you know, uh, Gio, all these guys, you know, they're, they're top class. And they're obviously well coached and everything. They do, you know, they, they question the referee. And, but that comes from year, years of experience, you know. I mean, I think, I think we probably did something similar ourselves. I think most teams, uh, experienced teams in particular, you'll always try and get, 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 get the referee on your side. And you're hoping in a 50-50 situation or 50-50 call that he'll go your way. But that's just one of, one of the many talents these, these Dublin guys have. You know, they're, they're very clued in, you know, because... I was up, I remember there a few months back at the, the sad occasion of Anton O'Toole's funeral and all the, the old dubs were there obviously as well and, and most of the, I'd say 90% of the present day lads are there and they're, gee, they're very polished guys, they're, they do everything right really, you know, on the mm. field and off the field and they're, they're accredited to the county and I suppose it's up to awful as now to try and knock them off their perch if we can do that and it won't be easy. Yeah, that, that's kind of the, the point I was trying to get at, the, the level of professionalism, the level of detail that they had to go to, Mikey. And I, I guess when we look at these two different eras that we've been mentioning here, there is one parallel. There, like, we can talk about it as a rivalry, but ultimately, in your era, it seemed that there was a rivalry that leaned one way in your favour quite a bit, whereas in this current era, certainly this decade, it's a one-way street in the rivalry as well, isn't it? So this is a huge yeah. moment in terms of the crossroads of that rivalry. If Kerry managed to somehow win on Sunday, we will talk about this era in a very, very different manner. Absolutely, you know, because I suppose <clears throat> when we started, we won in 75. I mean, Dublin had, had won 174, but now people must remember then again that it wasn't as lopsided as you say, because Dublin sure. beat us in 76 and 77 yeah. to bring us down a peg or two. Then we got, we, we got a run on them again, you know, but it, it's, you see, if you look at next Sunday and if, 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 if Kerry are lucky enough to win, which I think Kerry are in with a right fighting chance, you know, it could be a start of a golden generation for Kerry. It could be roles reversed again because there's some massive talent coming through, and <clears throat> particularly the last, the Kerry have won the last five minor titles in a row, and, uh, you know, and there's massive, mass, as Sean will well know, there's massive work being done at underage level in, 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 in Kerry and the, 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 these unheralded coaches that have, have been working at this for the last. I suppose the, the, this plan has been in place for the last seven, eight years, and it's now coming to fruition. You know, so I think, I think, even if Dublin win next Sunday, I, I think it's only a matter of time before Kerry are going to win in Ireland. There's Kerry definitely going to win in Ireland within the next two to three years, and hopefully it'll be next Sunday. You know. Mikey, just we we always talk about how the players um, deal with the the, the build up to the to the big day. But what about management? You were obviously with Eamon for for a good few yeah. years, um, and and you saw it from a player's perspective as well. But yeah. uh, how does the management approach the game? With which obviously it's so so you know meticulous now in terms of planning for kickouts from Cluxton and who's going to pick up who. But I suppose at this stage, Peter and his team will have all that done and and, and be ready for the weekend. Oh, they will, you know. In fairness to Peter, like he's 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 done exceptionally well for a guy that has come in, you know, I think was it was it three years he was involved with the minor team, you know, I think he was involved with John O'Keefe and Mickey Ned O'Sullivan as a selector for for, for right. one year. But they've done very well. I mean, if you look you look at them uh, during the National League, got to the National League final. It was probably a disappointing performance in the league final. But I mean, you know, I think I think Peter's always said like that he, he wanted to discover new players, he wanted to to, to to put his own stamp on on the team, which he is. And I think the addition, I suppose, of holding on to Morris Fitz from, from, from the outgoing setup, and also bringing in the likes of Donny Buckley, you know, and Tommy Griffin, obviously came with him as well, you know. I think that's a very, very good setup. And I mean, Donny has massive experience, uh, particularly being involved with Mayo, coming up against Dublin. And I suppose they were, as everybody says, I know the Mayo people hate hearing this, but there's no doubt that they're. They were the most unluckiest team not to win in All Ireland, you know. Mm. And they they will have been meticulous in their planning, and they'll they'll have they'll have looked at video stuff, hours of video stuff, and and just condense it down. And um, they'll try and attack certain areas. They'll you know even though there's very few weaknesses in that Dublin setup, but I'm sure the boys will will attack a few on Sunday. You'll be asked this about a hundred times or more between now and Sunday. Are Kerry going to do it? I think yeah, I'll be true with you know, and I, I I'll give you an honest answer. I think. That Dublin have to be hot, hot favourites because they are they are the best team in the country. But I think if anybody is to do it, it's awful. And the reason I give us a chance is that we have two things in particular. We have massive pace within the team. Now, 
whether we're conditioned enough or not to, to, to match these dubs, I don't know. But we have excellent forwards, and I think that they'll be clinical. These guys are good. The likes of David Clifford, as I said, Sean Shea, Paul Gainey, Steve Nobrine, they're clinical. If they get chances, I guarantee you they'll take them, you know. And because these guys, as I said to you, in particular the two younger guys, uh, O'Shea and David Clifford, they've, the t- temperament is top class. And, and Sunday won't save them. They have been there before with the minors. And I know it's a huge step up. But I, I have every confidence in them. And I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm excited about it. And I'm still hoping for a Kerry win, obviously. <laughs> Mikey, thanks a million for taking the call. Really appreciate it. No problem, Les. No problem. Thanks, Mikey. Kerry legend Mikey Sheehy there on the line. The confidence slowly building, Sean. Yeah, he made, uh, he made some very good points. Mikey's uh, uh, always a, a good man to talk football. Uh, a few things I picked up on, Owen. First of all, just about the young guys. You know, we talk a lot about those five in a row minor teams that are after coming but through Kerry. Just for like people who wouldn't know, like you were obviously very involved in the development squads that yeah. would have produced those uh, yeah, all Ireland Yeah, players. so I would have, uh, not, not all of them, but a good few of them would have came through my hands. I, once I stepped away from the county scene, um, Donald Daly down there, who's obviously very active in, in uh, in in the uh, underage coaching, just got a lot of. Actually, what what he did was he just revamped the whole development squad system completely. On he got a lot of ex players back involved, uh, which I think was a huge thing, and um, put us all through our coaching badges, I suppose, for want of a better word, and uh, just brought a real kind of professionalism to the underage setups down there. Now there was fantastic work being done by the clubs. Anyway, the development squads really was just trying to get these young guys ready for the next step, which was a Kerry minor. Um, but, you know, it, it, talking about winning all Ireland's is great uh, at minor level, but it just prepares players for playing in Croke Park. The more games you play in Croke Park, the better. Mm. Okay, you know, Peter Keane alluded to last week about the likes of David Clifford and Shawnee Shea winning minor all Ireland's playing in half empty stadiums as such for the minor final is nothing compared to what they're going to face on Sunday. But still, winning up there is, is, is definitely something that's, you know, they have in their, in their armory and, and they can bring that confidence. And, uh, you know, I think young guys these days, anyway, I, I don't think things like that affect them, to be honest with you. And the second thing he mentioned was about the conditioning of the teams and that we have great pace. The question mark would be, you know, Dublin are down the road in terms of their conditioning development and the amount of work they've done. You know, you know, we all see that picture going around on the internet of Conor Callaghan's mm. physical development the last few years. What you have to understand is Kerry are at the start of this as such. You know, they brought in Jason McGahan there, a well-renowned um, S&C coach last year, and he's in the first year of getting these guys ready. Now, is it a bit too soon for them to be in an All-Ireland final? Possibly. I remember in our days, Pat Flanagan, when he came in first, um, he actually took over in 2004, but I remember him telling us that he didn't think we'd peak until 2006. Right. But we won the All Ireland in 04. Do you know what I mean? So it's not like we won the All Ireland by accident. We just happened to be the best team in the country that year. But he said, no, conditionally, conditioning wise, we won't peak until, until 06. And what happened in 06? We won the All Ireland again. So Very interesting. It is. It is. So get McGahan is the start of his of his curve, if you get me. So that's one question mark I would have over the two teams the next day in terms of Dublin are well ahead in terms of, of, of their conditioning, you know? Now I'm very confident we're going to stop the seven in a row. <laughs> uh, the Drive for Five special is taking over OTB Sports Radio all day from 7am to midnight with build up to the All-Ireland Football Final. It's all with thanks to Tech7. Simply tech it and leave it. We've been doing the World Cup of Kerry and Dublin players over uh, the last couple of hours. It is Kerry and Dublin players uh, who've won All-Stars over the last 25 years with the loose criteria and then we narrowed it down again. We had group stages, we had our last 16, and now we are into the quarterfinals. So uh, the first winner of uh, the last 16 was uh, Colm Cooper, who's made it through to the quarterfinal. He fended off the challenge of Mike McCarthy pretty comprehensively, 97% of the vote for Colm Cooper. And that is <laughs> I was unbelievable. Voting, I was actually voting on this coming down the bus. Uh, oh, and I, I, I have to say, I, I really felt sorry for Mike Mack when I saw the result there. But Mike, knowing Mike, he won't be too bothered. Uh, Alan Brogan got a 3% score earlier on as well, okay, so uh, he's, well. Uh, he's in good company. Uh, he'll be up against Stephen Cluxton in the quarterfinal. Here's how Cluxton got, up, uh, got on against Kieran Kilkenny. 88% of the vote there as well. Yeah. Uh, a couple of hammerings in the last 16. Uh, the second quarterfinal is going to be between Jack McCaffrey because he just about beat Bernard Brogan. That was the tightest Tight. of all. That was a match of the round, really, beating Bernard Brogan 53% to 47%. Dear McConnelly will be McCaffrey's opponent. Dear McConnelly beat Paul Flynn 73% of the vote going to Connolly. Quarterfinal three then, Morris Fitzgerald got a big old score in the last 16 as well. By all accounts, he got 84% and he'll be up against Seamus Moynihan who finished up on 67%. And then the final quarterfinal will be Tommaso O'Shea 
who beat Darrow O'Shea, 55% to 45%. We can see who off the ball voted for there. And uh, Brian Fenton uh, beat James McCarthy 82% to 18%. So now it gets interesting. We're into the last eight. It's Gooch against Cluxton. It's McCaffrey against Connolly. It's Morris Fitz against Seamus Moynihan. And it's Tomas O'Shea against Brian Fenton. We're going to look at a quick tactics board in just a moment. But before that, here's Brian McGuigan talking about Dermot Connolly. Dermot Connolly was a standout, standout performer uh, on the pitch. I think uh, his intelligence in the play and his setting up of play. But I was very surprised at throwing that, not putting the man marker on him. And I thought at half time maybe they would, they would have pushed somebody up on him to follow him just for the whole second half. But it never seemed to materialise. But you would have to say, uh, just watching from the sideline, Connolly's, Connolly's play was very intelligent in that when somebody was picking him up he was drifting back and going behind the ball and once the thrown player drifted back into his, his defence and he was coming late and he was just dictating the whole play and he, he was excellent and, uh, today for, for, for Jim Gavin's team and I think he's he's definitely going to have a big part to play in the semi-final and final if they get it uh, maybe not a starting place but definitely if they need a spark in, in the second half of the game he, they could definitely call, call upon him yeah, of course, do you want to talk about your home county, but while you're on the topic, topic I should say, of Jeremy Connolly, like, could you even nail in what position was he playing today? Because he seemed to kind of start in the half-back line, but then became a bit more advanced up the pitch maybe in the second half. Yeah, I think he was just seeing the game uh, as it played out, and uh, any time he seen space, he drifted into it, and he, he seemed to have plenty of time on the ball. And, and look, don't get me wrong, if Damon Connolly plays later on in the championship, he certainly would not get that space. But it was just a joy to watch him today, uh, the range of passing that he had. And he scored an excellent point in, in the second half. And uh, he, could, he he was kind of like a link man. He was like a quarterback playing for Dublin today. And maybe that's something something that they haven't got in, in their artillery. And that's something he could bring to their game. Yeah, Brian McGuigan talking to Stephen Doyle there during the summer about Dear McConnelly. As you can see, we're at the tactics board with Sean O'Sullivan. We're going to look at a couple of things here. We're going to look at man marking jobs, who's going to take who, but we're going to start with the carry forwards. Yeah, Owen, as, as Mikey uh, mentioned in our, in our call there, um, if Kerry are going to have any chance on Sunday, their forwards are going to have to be really, really on top of their game. Um, we're going to have to be really economical. We're going to have to kill the ball, which is going to be crucial when we get into Dublin's third. Um, we're, we can't allow quick uh, restarts from Cluxton by dropping the ball into his hands. And we're just going to have to make sure that that ball is, is kicked dead, especially when it gets to Cluxton's kick out and how we set up. But we, we might get to that in a minute. But in terms of our forward setup, I'm actually very, very conscious of what Dublin are going to do with our centre forward, which will be Shawnee Shea, I would assume, unless... Peter Keane is going to throw a real curveball. <laughs> um, but Shawnee is having a fantastic year. Um, possibly a little bit quieter against Tyrone. Um, and I think the reason why, and it, it also, it kind of uh, threw its head up as well uh, in the league final against Mayo, the league final defeat. Shawnee Shea tends to, just tends to sometimes, drop a little bit too deep for my liking. He's obviously a very gifted footballer and wants to be on the ball and be involved. But we don't need Shawnee back here beyond our midfield getting ball where we want him receiving it. We want him receiving it up here where he's going to cause trouble. Um, in terms of who's picking him up, Keen O'Sullivan obviously is, is Dublin's renowned centre-back. Um, if Keen O'Sullivan is detailed to mark Shawnee Shea, Keen often drops back and protects his full back line when the, the play is moving up the field. So, for instance, David Moran has a ball or whoever's partnering him has a ball and wants to play the ball forward. Keane is, you know, he's made a, an art now of knowing where the trouble is and going and, 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 uh, and helping out, firefighting, if you like. That's where Kerry would need to get Shawnee on the ball because not only is he a very good kick passer and a guy that will link the play for us, but he's a super score taker from distance. And you'd just be wondering that if he got on the ball early and got us on the scoreboard, kicked a few scores for us, then that would make Keane O'Sullivan maybe decide, well, that can't happen anymore or Jim Gavin might have to make a change. Now, on the flip side of that, Jim Gavin might decide that Shawnee Shea is just too dangerous a player to allow that space given to. So my feeling is that James McCarthy will actually start to him right. and push right up on him and take him. Right, that's interesting. Would that mean Keane O'Sullivan doesn't start? Keane O'Sullivan either doesn't start or they find another role for him in the full back line, which I think would be a feather in the cap of Kerry and it'd be, yeah. it would be win number one for Peter Keane. Um, but I, I genuinely think that Shawnee Shea would just have too much in the tank for Keane O'Sullivan 
legs wise and also if Keno Sullivan does play his normal game of dropping back he's just too dangerous a player to leave free and give 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 time on the ball to So what does he do if James McCarthy shows up in him because obviously McCarthy wants to go this way Yeah if James McCarthy then comes on on uh, on, on Shawnee Shea then Shawnee's obviously going to have to be very disciplined in terms of tracking um, but again I would be conscious that, that, that he doesn't go too deep you know obviously James McCarthy likes driving forward and you have to go with your man mm. but that's that's okay if Shawnee Shea is dragged there and, and this brings me back actually to my time playing and it was something that Jack O'Connor told a half forward line that would usually be myself Paul Galvin Darren O'Sullivan we'd usually be competing for those three spots Owen Brosnan okay if one of you is dragged back the field there has to be a presence on the 40 so if Shawnee Shea gets dragged back if Stephen O'Brien gets dragged back if our number 10 whoever that may be gets dragged back you're just going to have to keep a presence on that line so if we do turn the ball over then we've got something to hit even if two of you are dragged back that this guy maintains the presence Jack O'Connor would often tell us whether it be myself and Galvin or, or Darren and, and Paul or myself and Owen that if someone is dragged maybe it would be Declan Declan might be dragged out of the centre forward spot that if we maintain our presence there and just come in a little bit close along the 40 that if we turn the ball over here that that out ball is there to each flank and you're probably asking why well if you can get your man on the turn there rather than receiving a straight ball if you can get him turned then you're on the run and you're into goal and, and it's something that Kerry have is an abundance of pace we had it back in the, the noughties Kerry have it too imagine Stephen O'Brien receiving a ball here and on the turn attacking the Dublin full back line or else looking for your Clifford Jorgeny or whoever it may be inside. So it's fine getting dragged back, but once somebody is maintaining the presence on this line, it's important, preferably to Shawnee himself. Mm. There's going to be times in the game where he's going to have to follow James McCarthy or, or Keen O'Sullivan, but trying to maintain that presence there. In terms of who picks who up here, look, it's very difficult to get inside Jim Gavin's head, but I would be thinking that, uh, I, w I would say that John Small would probably be detailed to Stephen O'Brien. That would be my, my opinion. Um, and inside, our two danger men inside are obviously David and Paul Ganey, David Clifford, Paul Ganey. I would think Johnny Cooper will get the job of marking David Clifford. Okay. He's been successful enough on him before. Um, and I think that uh, Mick Fitzsimmons would probably end up on Paul Ganey. Who else is in there with Kerry is the big question. That is the big question. That's the big question. Well, um, if, if you're Peter Keane, like... The big question is, is it Tommy Walsh or not? Yeah, I, I, I think Kerry won't start Tommy Walsh. Okay. Um, look, I was at the Tyrone game and I was actually behind the canal in goal for the first half. And I said to a friend of mine that was with me at the game at halftime that it was crying out for Tommy Walsh mm. because the way Tyrone played, dropping their numbers back, David Clifford and Paul Ganey were getting so frustrated that they ended up coming way out the field and we had no target man inside. David Moore actually found himself drifting in at one stage in, the, in on top of the square and called for a ball. Was unlucky not to get it. It was crying out for Tommy. And when Tommy came on around the 50-minute mark uh, up on the other side of the field, it worked a dream. Yeah. Um, I just don't think starting Tommy... I think Tommy might be a plan B for Kerry. I think Killian Spillane will get the nod. Right. Um, he wasn't brilliant against Tyrone but he has shown that he's well able to score and I think it'll be a different type of game than the Kerry-Tyrone match. What I think Kerry will actually try and do is replicate what they did, especially in the first half against Mayo and Killarney. Like, let's be honest, that was Kerry's best championship performance so it far was, this summer. Yeah. And what they did was they dropped, they asked Paul, Paul Ganey and James O'Donoghue, who, question marks over James's fitness, although his word has it is that he's, he's going to be in the 26 and that he's, yeah. Yeah, that he's going quite well in training for a guy that hasn't a lot of game time. The two lads dropped deep. Stephen O'Brien was given a free role, which I think they'll be given again on Sunday. That's where he's most effective. And inside you played, you had David Clifford and Shawnee Shea actually pushed in deep. And your other corner on that day, sorry, that was James O'Donoghue and Stephen O'Brien was pulled out deep and, Sh and Shawnee Shea was pushed in. So what they'll try and do, Kerry, will, is replicate what they did that day, where you had Stephen and, uh, Stephen and Shawnee Shea out deep linking. Um, and you had David Clifford and Shawnee Shea, excuse me, inside. And out around here, you got you drop Paul Ganey and, and James O'Donoghue deep. They might even pull Killian Spillane out. They'll just try and upset the dubs a small bit early on, I would say. Um, and we all know what happens 
the Dublin reaction to that is to Keogh Sullivan back, and you've just explained what happens exactly. when that happens. So exactly. So it's very interesting. Yeah. There, is, there is a clear way that Kerry can actually get their way into this game offensively. Well, Kerry have to get their four best forwards on the ball. Mm. Their four best forwards are Paul Ganey, David Clifford, Stephen O'Brien and Shawnee Shea. They are our match winners. If we can get a return from Killian Spillane, I think our other forward will be Gavin White. Now, I say forward in inverted commas. He'll be on Jack McCaffrey. He'll be on Jack McCaffrey, I think, to do a job on him, which is very, very difficult, but he will be a, a, a runner on Jack. So that leaves us really with five forwards. And if we can get a return from Killian Spillane, who I believe will start ahead of Tommy Walsh, along with the four other guys, we have a chance. Just very quickly then, just the matchups. Very, I know we're out of time here, just yeah. with the matchups yeah. on the carry so side. So again, I, I'm going to throw a curveball here. <laughs> uh, I think our full back line will line up with, I think Tyg Morley will have to go on Conor Callaghan. I know he's marked Kilkenny before and done quite well, but I, I can't see the carry management moving him out of the full back line. I think Tom O'Sullivan will pick up uh, Paul Mannion. Tom has done very well on some good players this, this season. He'll, he'll get a tough obviously a very tough uh, task on Paul Mannion and that leaves Jason Foley on Dean Rock out the field I think Paul Murphy will be detailed on um, Scully I think Gavin Crowley will pick up Howard and this is the one this is the big one that's causing question marks in Kerry on, on, on Kieran Kilkenny I'm actually going to plump for Shane Inright I think he's got the physicality He'd relish the challenge, knowing mm. Shane. He'd really relish that challenge of, of trying to shut down, I think, Dublin's key man, even though Kieran Kilkenny would probably would have had better years in the past up to now. Famous last words. <laughs> but I think Inright is a guy that could, could get the nod there. If not, then Tom Sullivan may be detailed to go out on him and possibly Brino Begliuk may come in here in the full-back line. very interesting shout, because I thought the, the Michael Murphy experiment wasn't as bad as people thought, or, or Shane Inright in that position out, out the field actually was pretty good that day. And... I think Shane Inright's best game for Kerry this year has been against Mayo. Yeah. And he played out around the half back line. Now obviously, look, it's a different completely different kettle of fish picking up Kieran Kilkenny. But I think he's a, he's, it's a guy that could relish the challenge. It's a good shout, Sean. Uh, thanks for that. That's a tactics board. We've got more coming up in just a moment. We've got Mark O'Shea and Darrow Kaneda standing by. Before that though, let's hear what David Moran had to say after the All Ireland semi final win against Tyrone. I'm joined now by Kerry's uh, David Moran, who is, I'm not surprised, rehydrating after that. That was a uh, an interesting game. Yeah, yeah. It was. I suppose. Look, semi-finals are all about winning. We weren't too bothered about how we played. It was just trying to get to the final, and thankfully we have. But when you say you weren't too bothered, I'd say at the same time you're probably glad that you're playing. I don't use the word improved, but you got a bit smarter in the second half. We did. We did. We weren't happy with our first half performance. Um, you know, and the, and the scoreline reflected that. And we knew that we needed to up every facet in our game, especially our conversion. Um, and thankfully we did. Definitely, because when you watch the first half in particular, what kept you in it was a few little flashes of individual brilliance from Sean O'Shea and David Clifford. I'm thinking of that point he got under the Cusick stand. That must have, you must guys must have known, we haven't performed and we're still there. Yeah, absolutely. Look, he's the two, the two, uh, the two lads are, are fantastic players uh, and it's, it, makes, it makes our job out, uh, a lot easier outside there when the two boys are inside. No, definitely. And then you guys all finished the job then, the second half. Now, here we are again now, Dublin drive for five. If any team knows what drives for fives it's Kerry um, are you guys are you going to be able to do it can you stop Dublin I don't know look it won't be from the, the lack of train anyway you know we're going to go out there and give it everything we have obviously it's a huge a huge game and a huge uh, challenge uh, Dublin have been incredible over the last five years uh, they've played football very the right way they've, they've conducted themselves in a great manner uh, and look we're going to go up and give everything we have and we'll see what happens David Moran there speaking to Maura Trasney Kelly after Kerry beat her own in the Ireland football semi-final a few weeks ago. Delighted to say that we've got Mark O'Shea and Daryl Kaneda with us on the line this afternoon. Good afternoon, lads. How are you on? Uh, we might start with you, Mark, if that's okay. We just want to. We were going to chat about how things have changed between the last decade, Kerry in the noughties, and this decade. And I guess one of the key components of that is the presence of Dublin and the emergence of Dublin as a serious, unstoppable at times force. From your perspective, how did that view of Dublin change between the two decades? Uh, how much more seriously did you take them this decade, for example? That is a total transformation, really, when you think mm. about it, because. Uh, I suppose in the last decade it was it was Tyrone and ourselves that were winning the All Ireland, and uh, you know we we were we were there 2000, 2004, six, seven, nine. Tyrone were there three, uh, zero five, and zero eight. So this year the Dubs have won seven already, I think. And um, la in the last decade, uh, you know we 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 were able to beat the Dubs fairly handy, and, and Tyrone were able to beat the Dubs fairly handy. But I don't think they, they, they like that. That much, you know, but I suppose 2011 was the big one when they beat us in 2011. It kind of opened the door. It kind of, 
you know, these they, they were a young team and uh, they, they, they had quality. And then when you look at 2013, they were able to add to that. They were able to bring in the likes of the Brian Fenton, the Kieran Kilkenny's, the Paul Mannions. And they, they've been adding to that every year. Uh, you look at it this year, Conor Callahan has really come of age. You know, there's, like last year we were talking about Owen Merchant. He hasn't even got a look in this year. You know, Davey Byrne is playing so well. So they've been able to, that, that conveyor belt is, is continuously going. And, you know, whilst, whilst you say Kerry are winning five in a row, minor titles and all of that, you still, you know, and we have been producing players and it's great, but I suppose Dublin has still been producing players and, and that's the most important thing. And when you have players to come into a team that has senior players there already, I think it's it's so easy for, for, for players to gel in. You know, Dara's on the other line there and he, he came into a team that had the likes of Morris Fitzgerald and Liam Flaherty and Eamon Breen. Whilst if you look at, at this Kerry team, you know, there isn't that many senior players on it. Uh, so so I suppose from that point of view, this Dublin team, they're a very mature team. They're they're they they're able to kind of mix the, the young with the new and they they're in lethal form at the moment. Dara, do you think that if Jim Gavin was manager of Dublin in the 2000s, they might have won in All-Ireland? <laughs> That's a conversation, I suppose, for, for, for a bar stool and for, for, you know, for, for early hours in the morning. He's a fantastic manager. He's, he's an amazing. He seems to have the, these lads drilled to the last, you know, every last detail is considered. And the, the approach is, you know, to the game... By and large, I, I think neutrals, maybe small, despite a small bit of begrudgery, they, they like the way this Dublin team plays football. Um, it's a, probably unfair to say if he was this or if he was that, if he was there instead of Tommy Lyons, Paul Caffrey, and these lads that they would have won more. You know, it's it's he is where he is now and the job he's doing. I'd like to take one all Ireland often though. Mark gave him one too many. Like you know, they do, they don't have the seven yet, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, nah. This decade, anyway, but uh, I know you know. I was never a maths teacher, Dara. Yeah, <laughs> neither was I. Neither was I. That's for sure. But uh, no, look, Jim Jim Gavin has done some job. Even you, I think you have to give Pat Gilroy a lot, lot of credit too, mm. because that was the one. You know, I suppose anybody that wins in Ireland, your first one is always the one. You know, where you you have to break through barriers and different barriers. And Mark was playing that day, like, and they Kerry did really well right to the end like and they had one hand on it and Dublin managed to smash and grab and from then on you know but the Gilroy's achievement in winning 11 even is huge like because you know, they were coming from two years previously being beaten by a very strong Kerry team and then making progress in 10 and then 11 just getting over the line and having the belief to force Kerry you know when the script seemed to be written you know, and, and, and to change that course of history, like, and that's the one really, you know, that, that a lot of people in Kerry will point and say this, that was the moment where I suppose the monster was created from a Dublin point of view, like that the, 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 oh, the final ingredient of self-belief and conviction became a reality and they, they get their hands in Sam Maguire. And after that, the, as they say, the process kicked in and Jim Gavin's, you know, system kicked in and their, their abilities kicked in and the results are there for all to see ever since. Hi, Dara, Sean here, how are you? Not too bad, Sean, but how's it Good, good, you got down from Nevin, okay, did you? I did, I was, like I was saying, I'm not, I'm not half as tactically nuanced as you were, I was listening to you there earlier, you have, you have, the, you have the team picked already. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, great, your heart out. No, uh, listen, just, I suppose, going to that and going go to the, the tactics and what we were talking about, uh, you know, for us, to, for us to cause an upset on Sunday, and that's what it would be, our forwards are obviously going to have to have a very good day at the office, obviously being a, a top class forward yourself where can you see us getting at Dublin you know obviously they're a fantastic team as Mark alluded to but I mean we have to go up there and, and attack them at, at some weak point is there a weak point and if there is where can we get at it uh, they, you know, I mean, there, there's a perception that there's weak points under high ball and all this, you know. Rory O'Carroll was the gla last, I suppose, man that would stand his ground and battle, but Philly McMahon has done a good job there in recent years as well of standing ground and battling with physically superior players. So, Mick Fitz Simons and Johnny Cooper, where you're looking down at them and you're saying, God, they're probably yielding a stone to their opponent here, mm. but they're well able to come over with high balls as well. But you do have to try the high ball option. It has to be an option. I mean, we know how good Dublin are. We this is the beauty of it from Kerry's point of view. You know, the graph is still rising. Dublin are spectacularly high for such a long time, but the graph is still rising in Kerry's point of view. Like, and you know, we don't know how good David Clifford can be. We don't know how good Sean O'Shea can, can be. Stephen O'Brien is as good now as we thought he could have been. You know, mm -hmm. a number of years ago, he's becoming that good, really solid player that delivers performances all the time. Like, so, um, you know, looking for weaknesses in Dublin. You can, 
you know, I, I remember when we were winning and you, you, you're listening to people talking about possible weaknesses, you know, in our teams, and you're saying, ah, not really the same is true for every team. You know, mm-hmm. the same is true for a Kerry team if you bombard them uh, with, with a high ball. I'm sure one or two are going to break and you're going to get a goal off, and then there's a perceived weakness. The perceived weakness in the Kerry defensive system now is if you run at them, uh, they will concede freeze. But isn't the same true of all teams, really, if, they, if you create enough panic? You know, it, it's hard to preempt and to say, listen, what, 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 this is something that will definitely work against Dublin next Sunday if we do this. I mean, if you had three Tommy Welch's, three Kieran Donahue's, that you don't, you know, that type of ball would, would struggle. Would, they, would, they would struggle with, I'm sure, if you put three real, genuine ball winning uh, forwards deep inside and making the ball stick and making lads drift mm-hmm. further back the field. But you don't have that. Um, so what you, what you do have is some really, some players who we believe are going to be some of the great players that play the game, the David Cliffords, the Shawnee Shays and these lads. So we don't know where next Sunday will take us and that's a further step on the road. Will they go into their shells? I doubt they will. I think they'll perform the next day. I think these lads have been performing under pressure right throughout their development as footballers and it's just the next natural step for them. So if there is a perceived weakness, and there, you know, there's a lot of chatter about that, you know, that Dublin don't like a high ball and they don't like this and that. Same is true for every team. You know, this is a kind of a, it's a kind of a, 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 a stick to beat Teams with it, and it's a, it's something for us to be talking about to a player clever. Like we don't know. Like I mean, nobody knows. Nobody will have studied them as much as let's say Eamon Fitzmaurice did for the previous six years. Peter Keane and his crew have for this year. So, they, and and you know the Mayo lads would have studied them over the years. Like and we've seen signs every now and then that would give encouragement to other teams. But we don't. It's not a tactic, and it's not certainly not a strategy to base an All Ireland final on. You know. And Mark, uh, I know our, our, you know, we've been critical of our defenders, and as Dara uh, alluded to about when we ran at, but you know, uh, the question Mark I would have, and and, I, and definitely I'd like to hear your opinion on it. You know, given that you were the last line of defence many many a day with Kerry, I mean, where are the runners coming from? Is it an issue further up the field, or or is it maybe just a little bit of lack of leadership at the back that guys are going forward and there's no cover slotting in for them? Uh, well, I, I I just think the semi-finals. Um, I just think we were left a bit open at the back, and I know you had uh, Paul Murphy back there sweeping, you know, and I, I know his role was 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 uh, taken into question in terms of where, where he was actually positioning himself. But to be honest with you, I was very impressed with the Kerry full back line. I thought they acquitted themselves very well in the semi-final, particularly when there was so much pressure on them in that first half. Jason Foley and and Ty Morley. The one thing, and uh, Peter Keane has really gone up my estimation because the one thing he's doing with his team, he is playing players in positions that they haven't been that used to. We all saw Shane Enright a few years ago as a cornerback and nowhere else. Now he, we see him out in the half back line. Uh, we've seen Gavin White as a defender throughout his career. Now he's up in the half forward line. Um, you know, so Tyg Morley's back in the full back line. Now that that was a needy area, particularly when Peter Crowley got injured. Yes. And I think the Kerry full back line have acquitted themselves very well. Uh, also, then you know, as the game wore on, it was it was clear that Kerry needed to you know tighten up things in defence, and they did that at half time. They, they they regrouped and they came out in the second half. And there's always going to be periods. Look, you saw that the, I went up the two semi finals, and I saw Mayo cause Dublin bother in the first half. And if they had better forwards, they possibly would have got more scores on the board. Mm. So you know, I think that Kerry, I'd agree with that. I think Kerry's curve is on the up and. Uh, you know, I, great credit has to go to Peter Keane in the, in, the, in, in the way he has kind of molded players into positions. And, you know, while I'm talking about that, you talk about, I mentioned Gavin White going up wing forward. You know, there's no doubt about it but that John Small is going to be stuck on to Sean O'Shea the next day, wherever he goes. And, and you know, I was above in Navin as well. And watching Sean O'Shea, he played large parts of the game inside full forward. So, you know, I think you have to take players out of their comfort zones. Yeah. And, you know, if, if it's a case for John Small... John Small, I'm sure, will be looking at tapes in the, the National League final and how Lee Keegan was to count to, to Shawnee Shea. And, I, you know, to, in, in, you'd like to think that if that was the case, you take John Small out of his comfort zone, bring him back into the, into the full mm-hmm. forward line and then see. Because when you are playing in that last line of defence, it's a lot different playing in the full back line as it is the half back line. You, you can't take as much chances. You know, all you have to do there is ask Lee Keegan when he, when he, was, uh, when he slipped against um, Conor Callaghan. So it's 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 an area where where you do take a player out of his comfort zone. So I think the next day the game is going to be intriguing. You're going to have so many different battles. Obviously, if Kerry are to win, they're they're going to really have to get a lot of things right. Dublin, Dublin, 
could possibly be at 60%, 70% to win, but Kerry need to be at 85 to 95% to win this game. Just before we get your predictions, Mark, one last question for you. If you had a choice, who would you rather mark, Conor Callaghan or Paul Mannion? Uh, you know, it's, it's a tough one. It's a really tough one. I, 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 nearly, I don't know what, I'd nearly prefer to mark Conor Callaghan because I just think any man that Paul Mannion, he can, he can just get the ball, he can, he can score from a standing position. You know, and he's he's so he's so dynamic. Now the thing about Conor Callahan, he's similar in that when he gets the ball, he does take you on. Um, you know, but I, I think that you know, when you look at the second half, the Dublin Mayo game, and granted Dublin put on a performance, it was it was incredible. But you know, I think Mayo led to their, you know, their defending was you know, if if you were a Mayo person playing in that game and you look back at the defending that they had in the second half. They won't be happy with that. It was, you know, you'd like to think that the Kerry defenders would would do a lot better under uh, under the same pressure as as Mayo were under. And I think Kerry defend. I think the Kerry defence would be a lot more solid the next day. I don't think you'll see, um, kind of, you know, in the same position. You know, and, and I think when he went out the field, he had a far better game. You know, but certainly I don't think Mayo got the matchups uh, right the last day. I think if Kerry get the matchups right the next day, we're in with a far better chance. 100%. Uh, we'll go to our predictions then, Dara. We'll start with you. What way are you seeing this on Sunday? <laughs> you know what the heart says anyway. Um, <laughs> look, if you're being true to all the evidence in front of you, like you have to acknowledge like Dublin are a serious, serious team and it's going to take a serious performance to beat them. And, you know, they're probably their their performances, I won't say have dipped in All-Ireland Finals, but they haven't given season-high performances in the All-Ireland Finals up to now. This is probably a big target for them to give an actual masterclass in an All-Ireland Final. Kerry are less predictable. I, we don't. We genuinely don't know where, mm. where this team is going. Their, their graph is on the up and up, and we don't know where, the, where they're going to finish up. I, there is an All Ireland in this group of Kerry footballers. I've no doubt about that. I don't go buy into the notion that it might come a year or two too early, but um, it's, it's a chance of a lifetime for Kerry. And it's certainly not, it's not a game that you have nothing to lose, and it's not a free shot. It's an All Ireland final, and if they get an awful lot right. You know, and they're going to have to. They're going to have to get season high performances out of almost, you know, at least twelve footballers out there the next day. Like, and you know, that's a lot of ifs. And whereas we know on the evidence up to now that Do- Dublin have done it consistently. Maybe not so much in an All Ireland final, but it's you know they have done it over the course of four or five years. You know, logic would say Dublin. You know, for sure, uh, Dara. Thanks many for taking the call. Enjoy the game as much as you can on Sunday. Uh, Mark O'Shea, what way are you calling it? Yeah, you, you you know you'd have to go along with that. As I said earlier, I think Kerry to win this game, they have to be at ninety percent. Dublin could could afford to be at sixty five percent. Kerry need to get all the matchups right. Um, you know, I think in the full back line, we have to negate the influence of of Khan O'Callaghan and Paul Mannion. You know, what's Peter Keane going to do with his matchups middle of the field? I think you know they're going to go after Shane Ryan for his kickouts and and. I think Kerry need to kind of maybe load one side of the field. I think they need to go along with their kickouts. They can't be putting Shane Ryan and the defence under pressure with our kickouts. And again, like Dara said, there is a lot of this there. Um, you know, it, it's not beyond the bounds of possibility that Kerry can win this match. They can. They have great forwards. They have match winners. If we can get enough of a ball into them, who knows? And, and we've seen during the course of the year teams putting Dublin under pressure, the likes of Cork and that. And if we get enough of possession in the middle of the field, I'd say Kerry could possibly do it, but if I was to, to you know, my, my heart certainly says Kerry, but I, I would go along with that and say, you know, Dublin Dublin had the players, um, you know, to, to win this match, and if Dublin played their level, they should win it. Good stuff, Mark. Enjoy the game on Sunday, and we'll chat to you soon. Thanks, sir. Mark O'Shea and Daryl Kaneda on the line there. The Drive for Five special is taking over OTB Sports Radio all day from 7am to midnight with build-up to the All-Ireland Football Final. It's all with thanks to Tech7. Simply tech it and leave it. If you're just joining us, it is Owen and Sean O'Sullivan here in studio. We've got about five or ten minutes left on the Kerry Hour here. It's going to be a Kerry 70 minutes really and I'm delighted to say that Barry John Keane joins us on the line. Good afternoon, Barry John. How are you doing, very well. So it's been a pretty good summer for you, which we'll get to on a moment. But with a bit of a build-up down there, do you start to miss being around the Kerry camp on a week like this? Oh, yeah, do you, do you would have a few feels for it. Like, but look, um, one door closed, another door open for me. So I'm just, I'm just going to be a supporter for this weekend like I was all summer. Before we get into the game, just talk about that uh, open door. Uh, it was a summer away. It was a summer that resulted in you scoring a vital goal at the end of the championship uh, in the United States. Uh, talk to us about that and, and how good the football was over there. Yeah, yeah, I know I enjoyed my few weeks now. Um, no, it was a good old standard. Um, 
we were lucky enough to come, out, come away with a victory in the end. Probably probably weren't the best team all summer, but when it came to the crunch, thankfully, we, we took it in the end. How hard are you guys training over in the States during the summer? Is it, as, is it anywhere comparable to an inter-county standard, even when it gets to the white heat of battle near the closing stages? Uh, yeah, we use training two, two nights a week the same as back home, and you, right. you, do your own, you do your own gym sessions, but those two nights would, on Tuesday and Thursday would have been there would have been more running than I would have done back here, put it that way. It was very similar to uh, a few of the lads are from Donegal themselves, like so a similar setup to them where it was just a lot of running and with that 90 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, it didn't help either. Yeah, I'd imagine so. Uh, so this week for uh, a Kerry footballer, what's it like? Like, I mean, you've been down there now for, for the last couple of days. Is the hype starting to build? Will it be something that if you're nervous, of a nervous disposition, it might affect you a bit this week or will it be kind of water off a duck's back? Um, I say most of the lads, the, the older fellas have been there already and like the younger fellas have a lot of experience with minor level and won a lot of things in school. So I don't want to say it's a, like a, a one shot for them, right? but mm. they're going to they're going to enjoy it. Like They're going to enjoy this opportunity. They're not going to hold back. Um, they haven't really held back in the last few games. Like They've they've been playing with serious serious confidence and I think the, the big test was against Tyrone when it looked like it was probably going to swing away and they made a few substitutions and I thought it, I thought it just they changed the board and they're going to be very confident going into the final after that Very John Sean Bourne here how's it going? How are you doing Sean? Good good welcome back Rahali's uh, a good tip for the championship <laughs> I don't know <laughs> <laughs> Listen I want to talk about your two club mates actually um, David and Tommy I, I want to start with Tommy um, I mean you know what? What a what a, a fairy tale it would be for for him to either start or come on on Sunday. Considering, I suppose when he came back from Australia, there was a lot of hype about him that he was going to slot back into a, a, a an All Ireland winning team, really, and that uh, he was going to push on to the next level. Obviously, injury came in the way. A great guy and a guy that just put his head down, stepped back from it, and, and worked hard, and, and now he's got his opportunity again. Yeah, yeah, it's been a it's been a long journey. Like from two thousand and nine, as you 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 played with him, like he he nearly carried carried to that iron final mm. that second half when when things were going to get tough, and he took his opportunity. He went away. He probably enjoyed his five years. Probably didn't get as much out of it as he would have liked. Um, not a hard decision, probably to walk away from that lifestyle and said he'd come back and he was still young. He's still only twenty four, and he said he'd give he'd give Kerry a go again. And the hamstring injury didn't help, and just you need your breaks as well. And unfortunately. He didn't when he came back, and he was strong enough up upstairs to say, "Look, this isn't for me at the moment. I need to go back and play football. I need to go back and enjoy football." And that's what he did was trying to. There was probably no pressure, and I think I think he actually his goal wasn't to probably get back in McCurry. It was just to enjoy it, and mm. thankfully enough, he got a chance and he he took it. Do you think he'll start on Sunday? Personally, no. I think, like I know it's probably been said on the show already, but. It, if, the, if both teams are still in the last 20 minutes I think it's going to come down to the impact of the subs mm. I really do I think Kerry need to be there there or thereabouts or even more ahead than Mayo were and in control in the first half because Dublin are going to get two purple patches they seem to get it straight after half time where it's 10 or 15 minutes and if they, do, if they'll, they, they blow most teams away but if Kerry are still there after a purple patch Dublin seem to get another purple patch with 60 minutes to go so if they're, they're going to have to meet two purple patches to be honest. Yeah. No, I agree 100%. I actually wrote about it in, uh, for, for the Kerry man in, in my preview of the game. If Kerry are going to have any chance in this, we're going to have to replicate what Mayo did in the first half. And as Barry John said, we're going to have to tack on at least another four or five points and be leading by that amount going in at half time. And obviously a man pivotal to that, if that's going to happen, is, is your other club mate, uh, uh, Barry John, is, is David Moore. And again, another man that's had his injury woes down through the years. But, it, you know, that performance in Killarney, I, I presume you were you away for it, but you probably saw I was, I was watching it, yeah. His performance against Mayo, in my opinion, Barry John is up there with one of the best games, and we've played with David, you've played with him at club level, I've played with him at county. It's up there with one of the best performances he's ever put in. Yeah, look, that man has that man has had shown some adversity with his two cruise ships and his, and his eye, and he didn't get much. He, when he seems to get injured, he's out for more than more than other people would be, and he's just mentally tough. Um a big game the next day for him. It's a big ask. He's, you're probably you're looking at the two best midfielders the last six or seven years. Mm. Um, to be honest with you, I prefer if they didn't mark each other, so you could see the two of them express themselves. Yeah. I, like in an Ireland final day, you don't want the, you don't want them to be cancelling each other out. Mm. I think every fan, even outside of Kerry and Dublin, would like to see the two of them lord. Mm. Um, 
there's no fine line. It's 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 the main part of the game. Whoever whoever controls it or wins it is going to give their team a better chance of winning it. The other main part of the game, Barry John, um, is is obviously the Cluxton kick out. You know, mm-hmm. you played the majority of your career under him and, and, and his management team. Uh, what kind of, just for our listeners and, and, and viewers, what, what kind of detail went into to try and to, you know, gain any little advantage at all? You know, what, what, what kind of analysis would you have gone into as a forward line, for instance, on how you would set up, um, was it a press, was it a drop-off, or, or, or was it a mix, and, and what do you think Kerry should go with the next day? Um, it varied, it varied on different occasions, but I think, I think the press, the press worked a few times, but if that, if that press then is, it's like if you press too high and it, it goes over the top, you're probably you're probably leaving a bit of space behind, and that's where Dublin will exploit. Like I think they're very good at like just picking holes. Like he, he might make one mistake, clocks them, but he'll know the next kick out, and their players are just tuned in. They're very robotic, as in they know what they're doing, and it's going to be very tiring for Kerry because they're going to try to be getting scored. They're going to try to rattle off a few, try to get a few goals, and they need to be tuned in straight away again straight away for his kick out and that's hard to do for 70 or 80 minutes mm. one way of stopping the clocks and kick out Barry John would be to walk up to the tee and kick the ball off it as a carry man <laughs> <laughs> that would only last for a few seconds <laughs> uh, listen Barry John enjoy the game on Sunday thanks many for taking the call thank you very much See you, Barry, John. John. Barry John Keane there home and in the country after a pretty good summer abroad mm. uh, that is our hour done and dusted Sean thanks many for popping in we didn't get your prediction for the game so 30 seconds to, to tell oh, us what's going to happen uh, yeah look I suppose um I wrote during the week about uh, in 1980 the, the the US hockey team were going up against the Russians in the in the Winter Olympic zone and the Russians were going for their fifth gold medal in a row and nobody gave the US a chance but their their coach uh, Herb Brooks gave one of the greatest speeches of all time and he just basically said that great opportunities are sorry great moments are born from great opportunities if we played these guys 9 times out of 10 or sorry if we played them 10 times they'd beat us 9 times out of 10 but maybe not tonight Maybe not tonight, and, and the Americans went on and won. Look, maybe I'm being romantic. Maybe I'm miracle I'm, on grass is what we'll call it. Yeah. Well, look, again, it's hard to see past the Dublin win. They've just they have all the aces in the pack. They're just a, a formidable side. But maybe, just maybe, that that one chance Kerry might have. And and I agree with Darrow Canada. As Kerry people, we don't see this as we have go, we're going up there with nothing to lose you don't you don't go up to Croke Park with nothing to lose as a Kerry person because yeah. of our tradition and our and, and what we have available to us so unfortunately it's 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 a uh, heart says Kerry hit says Dublin yeah I'd agree with you there Sean thanks for popping thanks in so the studio this afternoon very much enjoyed it uh, we've got a fantastic few hours lined up for you on our Drive for Five special on OTB Sports Radio Joe Malloy is going to be joined in studio by Paul Rouse and Judge Brian McMahon back after these